Alrighty guys, it's another beautiful Sunday. We got some gorgeous weather outside. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and work on the next part for the KT parking attachment right here. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get this material machined. That is gonna be this piece right here, the tube. Two and a half inches in diameter, seven inches long, and it's gonna end up with an inch and a quarter hole board all the way through there. And this is the shaft that I'm going to use right here. This is a piece of 4140 that was turned a long time ago by me that was uh, never finished. It was a spindle shaft is what it was. And it's going to be what's going to be right here, this area. And it will be turned and set on that plate that we've machined just like that and get welded on there. So I'll show you how I'm going to do it. It's going to be a couple steps. We're going to we're going to chuck it and I'm going to do some uh, probably some facing or parting on this end right here to remove that little stub because that's already smaller than two and a half. And we'll have to turn this area here and we'll go ahead and turn it to turn it the size about halfway down and do our drilling. And then we'll probably take it and flip it over in the jaws and in the chuck. And I'm going to part this end off right here, have a little stub of material left over. And then we'll do our drilling, you know, facing the drilling and finish this side right there. So it'll be like a two-step process. And I believe what I want to do is leave the hole slightly small. And after it's welded onto the plate, I will finish boring it to size in the kerning trekker here, uh, either with a boring bar or maybe an inch and a quarter reamer. I haven't decided yet. I, if I use a reamer, which I kind of like to use a reamer, I need to find me a 50 taper adapter for a number four Morse taper. Uh, that's something that I don't have yet, so I might start looking for one of those on eBay maybe later on the day. Uh, it's something that I need anyway, so I might go ahead and jump on that. So that's what I want to do today. At least get this machine. They may not get it welded today, but we'll, we'll see. And also wanted to point out that we're using... This is our very first video using the uh, brand new Hero 4 Black that was given to me by Mark, uh, Mark from Michigan. So again, Mark, thank you very much for your contribution here to the channel. And I hope to make very good use of that camera that you just give me. So let's go over there to the Monarch and uh, start making some chips. All right, I've already got the jaw set very close to uh, about 2 and 9 sixteenths. So I'm going to start with, we're going to start with this end right here. And let's see. I'll go maybe about four. Yeah, that should be good right about there. All right, let's get her indicated. Looking pretty good right there. Right, I'm gonna start with that little stub in first and I decide I'm just gonna go ahead and part it off. Uh, hopefully everything will, will react good. It's sticking out a little farther than I like, but we'll give it a shot. We're gonna use some flood coolant. See how it reacts first. Yeah, it's kind of hanging out there, kind of hanging out there. You can see it's 
see it's trying to you can try to, it's trying to move around a little bit I don't have those real tight I might have to do a little indicating again after this so we'll see how she does what that noise was something fell over there I'm just using hand feed right here just so I can feel the cut I got a nice little stub there for something to use later you know it's some 4140 material all right we're gonna go ahead and give this a nice face here I went ahead and uh, re-indicated real quick it was a few thousands out and I retorqued the uh, chuck jaws there let me make sure this is on center before I go in there with it yeah just by the finish and the sound that it's creating that that's some good quality stuff right there that 4140 steel really hard tight chips is curling off that tool Alright, we get to do just a little bit of heavy chip control right here, turning all this flange looking area down. I swapped out the insert. This is a Mitsubishi insert with a 433, 430, it's a 430 size insert with a number 3 radius. So we're going to try that and see what it does. I don't think I've used that one before. Getting a zero set here, and uh, so I can do a half inch on the dial. I'm going to start with a quarter inch, uh, 250 on the dial. Let's see what it does. I'm gonna, I'll try a little bit of coolant right here on the tool. A little bit of coolant on the tool. Oh, I need to kick my feed rate up too. Go with uh, 15 thousandths. Pretty nice there. Go with another quarter, finish that out there. Speed it up some. It's 
good looking chip there. Maybe we'll try a little more here and see. So that was 250 on the dial. Let's go 350. Fifty, get a little bit more of this. See, I just don't like that when they start popping back like that. I like it when it curls over and breaks off. So I'm gonna go back to 250. That's a better chip to me. got one more one more good cut that I can take right here yeah that's at three inches right there and we're, we're going down to two and a half so I got you know, a little bit to come off take one more big cut here Alright, we got it down to where we're going to finish it out at. I swapped my insert for a 431, still running that Mitsubishi. Uh, some of them test inserts that Mike had given me. So we're at, uh, we're at 9 sixteenths exactly right now. But what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to leave this about 20 thousandths to 25 thousandths over. Uh, two and a half. And uh, I want a little bit of metal there on the, on the outside of the radius whenever I go to clean it up to kind of blend it all together. And this, this had already fit down in that radius that I machined on the block. And you can't even really tell that there's a gap in the bottom of it where it's at now. So I think leaving it 20, 25 over is still gonna fit really nice. Get up here and make us, uh, I'm gonna make a little cut. See how it does and then we'll finish it out. All right, let's see where I'm measuring it. All right, that's 17 and a half over. I'm just reading my lines in my own mind right here. I'm not, that's not 17 and a half over. I'm just the way I'm reading the mic there. So, and that's 17 and a half. So I'm still cutting nice and straight there. So I'm just gonna shoot for uh, 525. So I'm gonna dial in 17 and a half thousandths. Five twenty-five. I'm gonna go grab the part though and test fit it, make sure that it, that it is fitting that radius good. And if it does, we're gonna chamfer it. We're gonna start drilling a hole in it. All right, so I'm ready to drill a hole through this, and I'm just gonna go like halfway through it. It's what I'm gonna do. But so what I've done is I've got me a nice three-quarter taper shank drill, and I've got a new grind on it over at the uh, on the Lyle drill grinder and our our finish size is going to be inch and a quarter so I want to make it a little bit smaller than that I was thinking of just drilling it and just drilling it really close to size with enough metal there that after it's welded it'll clean up to inch and a quarter I've got a lot of these 
um, core drills. They're also called gun drills. But this is a three flute, and I've reground it. I just reground it, and now that looks a little funny there on the tip, but. It's been a long time since I ground a uh, three or four flute over on my Lyle. And when I went in there for my very first flute and started grinding it, I didn't have it positioned right on the wheel. And whenever I came around like this, I ground the, the cutting edge behind it. And it took it way down with that first little hit like that. So I had to go around all three of them and regrind it. And you see, this is what leaves in the middle there whenever you're using my style of drill grinder, which all you gotta do is go over to the pedestal grinder and just go in there straight with that just to kind of remove it if you want to, but that's not really necessary because you're gonna, you gotta have a pilot hole for a core drill. So whatever your, your core, your center of that is, you gotta make sure you have a hole at least that big and then you can go in there with your, with your core drill and finish it to size. Now, this one, I've got three of them that were inch and a quarter and I cleaned them off and looked at them this one was reground to 1.226 so that'll leave us you know approximately 24 thousandths in the bore there to clean up and there's two more of them over there and this was the smallest grind so I was I was wanting to try to get away from the inch and a quarter a little bit so what I'll do though is I'll I'll just drill in there a little bit at the start and then check it with my calipers and make sure that we're that we're cutting where we want it to be and if for some reason it's off I might just go with something different so let's go ahead and give it a shot and I'll, I'll use the flood coolant with this too time with this I'm not forcing the drill really hard because I do want it to try to maintain the best center that I can and even though I got a good grind on there that that chisel point tries to wander and if you if you over exert force on these drills like that they tend to try to push off and start drilling a crooked hole through there all right we did good with our three-quarter drill Seems to drill nice and straight. There's a look at the drill after it's, I've gone in there about four inches with it. Still nice and sharp. So we got our core drill in there. They're locked up. See how she does. I'm gonna go in there just a little bit. Oh yeah, looking good. Looks like we had three even flutes coming out. It's only giving us 15, so it's still still drilling a little bit bigger than what it's supposed to. I must not have it ground evenly. I think 15 will be good though. I think it'll still clean up. I'm gonna go ahead and go with it. Alright, one last stop on this side here. I'm gonna chamf chamfer this hole. So 
So now we'll go ahead and flip it around and get it indicated and uh, finish the other side. All right, we're getting ready to put it back in here. I've got some brass shims sheared up that I'm going to lay in here underneath the jaws, uh, just kind of protect, help protect the machine surface. So one thing that I got to uh, take consideration is my finish length that I want, and I want to finish this around seven and one sixteenth. The factory piece over there is just a few thousands bigger than that. So this is a good machine face right here that I can read off of. And I know I'm probably showing you this backwards, upside down or something, but uh, so seven inch 462, if I face 400 thousandths off that shoulder, that'll give me seven and one sixteenth. So that's what we're gonna do is once I get this chucked up, once I get this chucked up in here and we get everything going, We'll be able to part this off and I'll be able to just touch off with my facing tool there and then just step it over 400 thousandths. I'll probably back off uh, 5,000. So we'll take off, say, like 395 and then I'll put me right where the length I need to be, okay? So let's go ahead and get it in there. I'll go ahead and stick in a couple of these to start with. Leave myself a little room there for my turning tool. Emergency responders going by. That's what the sirens are for. Okay. Let's see if I can get my indicator right there. Trying to get it tight first before I loosen it, but I'm gonna have to loosen some. I can't get it all the way, so there's our low. All right, still got a few thousandths. Less than a thou. <clears throat> Come on, man. <clears throat> That's about as tight as I can pull on it right there without some leverage. Let's see. I got my little pipe here, and it's not much that I got to move it, so. I mean, a half a thou. Let me give it a little shot here. All right, that's close enough for me. Let's run with it.
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get the facing done now. Uh, that's my should be my finished facing cut right there. I'm gonna use a I got a small tape measure here that's that I've never really used before that should reach back there and I'll be able to get a measurement to kind of verify if I'm where I want to be. Just use this little Stanley right here. Looks like I'm right on it. Okay. All right, just getting the first the first pass done, and what I'll do is I'll mic it, and we'll finish it out. Not a lot to come off right here. Move that nozzle out of the way. Alright, showing 12 and a half. That's 12. So I want it to try to match as close right here as I can, so I'll just dial in what I want to hopefully even out and not make a heavy line there. Like it was starting to blend really close and usually what I do whenever I have to come into a in a transition like that is once it really breaks through and starts on the other side I'll just back off instead of letting it cut because it'll usually cut just a little bit but I think that did pretty good and right there on 525 like I wanted so we'll um, we'll hit a chamfer. All right, and then I just got to redo the, or our, uh, drill our hole again. All right, I got the pilot hole down through there. I'm going back in with my core drill. I'm not going to use coolant this time because the coolant goes through the chuck and slings out the jaws here now. So I'm going to use some uh, cutting oil. And it's going to make some smoke, but that's okay because I got all the doors open. And I got my window open right here. That ain't going to bother me. I'm just checking to make sure that we're maintaining our size. I did touch up that drill because I noticed one of the flutes was grinding a little bit heavy, but we're still about the same thing. So we're about, you know, 14,000 off our size. I am a little concerned that I'm cutting it close because I don't know how much that hole is going to draw whenever this piece is welded on both sides. But if it ends up not cleaning up the inch and a quarter, I believe all we got to do is just go to one and five sixteenths or make it whatever I want because I've got to machine the pin to fit this. It's doing good, but I can still tell that one of the flutes is drilling a little heavy. This one back here is putting a, a larger chip out. 
but I've already touched the drill up on the grind here again, so I'm not sure what to how to make that any better than it already is. All right, we had some success getting a hole through there. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and chamfer this side, and then the lathe work will be done. Scoop this back up. Get her out of there. I gotta give me a rag. Last drill and I've kind of warmed it up there. There we have it. Let's go fit it up on the on the uh, the flat plates. There's our tube, and that's how she'll sit right there. I got a little. Let me machine this little well prep right here. I've got a little bit of a chamfer on the the OD there. And whenever I go to weld this on, I'll just take my TIG welder and just fill that in right there. And just slick it off. That'll be, this will be the top side and nothing goes here. Just the, just the pin sticks out. But that's how she'll look right there. It'll actually be just flushed. Flushed on that end. Okay. Looks like it's sitting perfect down inside that radius there. So what I'll do is is end up welding. We'll weld all this up right here on both sides. That'll be a pretty simple weld. And again, I'm going to use my stick welder to do that. I'll get it. I'll get it nice and tacked on there, and then we'll go in there and probably only take maybe two passes. I'm not sure yet, but maybe two passes, possibly three, to fill that in. And then I want to dress this down and just kind of make it look smooth and even, just like the original right here. All right, so that part's done. Let's, uh, I guess our next phase is we're going to do some welding. We'll get it welded on, let it cool, and then we'll finish the bore, okay?